Ariel. So when you say in Mascale, you're stretching it. Well, how many Gospel do you have? Four. Wait, wait, and how many Gospel am I talking about? Wait, wait, 49. Wait a minute, wait, Is it a Mascale or not? No, ma no. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let, Manso, we only have a handful of ancient manuscripts of the Gnostic Gospels. Right? 49. Yeah, 49. But listen. Compared to four, which is greater? But listen. No, listen. No. Yeah, but the four Gospels, there are many, many Greek manuscripts. There are hundreds of... Wait, no, Manso. There are hundreds of Greek manuscripts that we've found. We've not found hundreds of Greek manuscripts of these Gnostics. We found a dump in in uh, not in, just there. In, in not just there. Yeah, but even if you don't go water it down. Even don't water it down. Answer, it answer, wasn't just found there. So even if you include them, we have hundreds upon hundreds of gospels, ancient Greek gospels. Compared to that, you can't say mass. Or secondly, secondly, if you read Dr. Kruger, uh, he talks about that the the the, the, the uh, heresy was not uniform and widespread. Heresy was widespread. No, it wasn't uniform. Listen, uniform. Agree. Uniform. That's our point. Uniform. That's exactly our pastor's point. They were, Jason, that's exactly our pastor's point. It was they, were, they were not a group of Christians who were orthodox teaching and believing in Christ's message. They were other unorthodox, heretical form of the teaching, supposedly all going back to Christ. They're all different. Right. Yep. And, and there were so many in such no no and such an order of magnitude that the early church fathers had to write massive volumes refuting them wait wait wait, 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 wait one, moment, one moment if jason if there was if there was one christian now a heretical christian writing a book keeping his own shelf no one knows about it do you think the Pope or Jason himself or every other Christian scholar on the planet needs to refute him? We don't need to. Why? He's not making an impact. But if there are a large group of Christians who do not represent the orthodoxy, the question is, what is the orthodoxy? Never mind. No, 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 no discussion. When you have a large... No, no, I want to make my point and your response. A large body of people, early Christians, who was influencing the dynamics of the teaching of Christ, that it needed your church fathers origin. Isubius? Yeah, yeah. You know, if, if, if they had to write massive volumes against the heresies, to refute them, it meaning what? The Orthodox belief was actually being now in check, in question, and also under attack. That is why, that is why, that is why, I'm going to recommend you to read two books by the agnostic scholar Bart Ehrman, Early Christianities and Early Scripture, the Lost Scriptures, where he goes and details. There was no such thing as an orthodoxy in the early Christian church. So you, hang on, hang on, Jason, this is my specialty. So Jason, there was no such thing as an early orthodoxy. There was port orthodoxy and so on. Whoever, okay, what was the orthodoxy in the first 200 years? Christianity. Yeah. Apostolic Christianity. Well, let me respond now. Let me. Respond. Have you read his books? Let me. I've read some of them. Not some all of them. Them. You need to read those books. These are crucial books. Let, let me. Let me respond. Let me respond. Yeah. Me go respond. ahead. The four Gospels spread all over the ancient world, right? You have Irenaeus in France, you had, um, you had people in, in Egypt, all over the ancient world the Gospels spread. You cannot say that for, say, the Gospel of Thomas. You can't say that that Gospel was spread all over the ancient world. Irenaeus wrote attacks on the, on the Gnostic Gospel. Yes, there was a, a, a Gnostic Gospel. But like I said, I come back to the manuscript evidence. It's a good point you made about Irenaeus. But the manuscript evidence is we have hundreds and hundreds of Gospels in Greek. From when? We, 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 whether it be, where we have from when? From, from very third, late. Third century, yeah. Very late. Yeah, That's but, the problem. Let me finish. Let me finish, though. I'm being honest with you and dialogue with you. Yeah. But what we do have is we do know from the tradition which you're quoting about uh, Irenaeus is that Irenaeus was in France.
Tertullian, um, he was African, yeah? So we know that the Gospels, the four Gospels, were being widely used all across the ancient world. You cannot say that for definite concerning uh, the Gospel of Thomas. No one read it? Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, the manuscript evidence, you can't say in the tradition or in the in the text that we have. Let me did, any, Mansour, let me did a group of people Mansour. read the Gospel of Thomas and consider it to be scripture? Mansour, I'll answer that, but let me finish. We, ha we have manuscript evidence and we have also, we have the manuscript tradition from the various early church fathers that the Gospels were widespreadly used. You cannot say that for any one of the Gospels of the Gnostics. You can't say that because most of the Gospels that we found, Gnostic Gospels, were found in Egypt. Do you know why they were suppressed? Right. Let because me, of let this pseudo-orthodoxy by me, the emperor, me, by the monarchy, finish, I, by the authorities. Can I finish? Can I finish? But you need to, look, let you, have, you, you can finish, but let me, let me, I would like you to tell us the complete story. The reasons why those Gospels were suppressed and, and then carry on. Because, because on, on the authoritative level within the state, right, they suppressed them because they didn't want them to be spread like everywhere. Let me answer. Let me answer. This we bumped into each other before on this, and I told and I told you read Dr. Bauer. Did you read it? I'm gonna don't bring about like oh I told you I didn't read. Right. Now don't. Jason, Jason, how much time do you need to finish your, your point? Just a couple of minutes. Okay, okay. And, then, and then I'd like to just say one thing if you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. Right. Dr. Bauer came up with these theories. They've been debunked by Dr. Kru uh, Kruger. To read him, yeah, because Bauer said took four cities and he used this theory that. Uh, uh, heresy spread all over the ancient world, he used four cities. But when you look at the manuscript evidence, that's not the case. When you look at the tradition, the gospels, the four gospels are spread wide. For my last point, my last point is, show me the chain of narration for when the Gabriel gave the, uh, the text to Muhammad in stick stones and bones. Show me the chain of narration for the stick stones and bones. Okay, so you've gone to, That's a, different, my question. You've gone to a different I know, point but now. I wanted to okay. get that in. But can I just say one thing, yeah? The, the, what I find often and somewhat frustrating is that with these discussions, you know, you've quoted a lot of written books, a lot of this, a lot of, the, a lot of history and what have you, right? But fundamentally, Ooh. it doesn't change the fact that you know that the scripture that you hold in your hand is not the literal word of God. I agree with that, Bart. You agree with that, right? No, I don't agree with that. That's you don't agree with that? That's a crazy statement. So, so, so you... Muslim hold on a second, hold on a second. That's so, a Muslim so, so, world view. So you feel... You feel... Okay, hold on. Definitely. I believe that we have the word of God today. Which, which, which Bible is that? We have the word of God. Which Bible is that? Uh, let me explain to no, you. No, no, please, just answer the question. No, no. I've given you a lot let of time me, to speak. Abbas, let me you answer... You have to be fair. It. We've had a dialogue. And that dialogue has been an intelligent dialogue. You need to clarify his point. I'm just asking which yeah. Bible well, are you claiming your masters, is the literal listen, word of God? Listen, your masters are asking close questions. We have the word of God in all the manuscripts. We get the manuscripts and we make the word of God. But all the manuscripts contain it. When we put it all together, we're human beings, we're not perfect. There is not one ancient manuscript, and he'll verify it, I've been on his website. The main early manuscripts are not perfectly preserved, that a verse is missing, you would agree with that. Top copy is not a full copy, is it? See? No, no, no. So, top, top copy. I, I don't see how the Quranic transmission is compared to the biblical transmission. You're, no, no, you're, you're comparing apples with bananas, no, 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 oranges. No, no, no. You can't do that. Jason, we've got to have story. an intelligent dialogue on it. But you can't Jason, compare. Jason. We'll have a dialogue on it. Jason, we'll have a dialogue. Jason, let's have a dialogue. Jason, you've just said that um, those Gospels have the Word of God. The Bible that you hold in your hand, therefore, by your own testimony, is not the literal Word of God, right? It's 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 what we have gathered from the manuscript. Right. But it, the, the literal Word of God is in the manuscript. Right, but not in your Bible. But, but, Wait a minute, as much as we can get, right, right? But the same is in your Quran. No, the spread of Let's deal with the Bible first, no, Jason. Abbas. We can move to the Quran, Abbas. it's not a problem. No, because your masters are. Let no, no, me no, no, no. Speak as well. I gave you a long time to speak. I, I, I was I very like, fair. We, we, he dialogued. No, I dialogued. No, he dialogued. And, and I let you go into lots of different tangents about yeah. history and about but books. You've got to let me but, no, 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 no. But I've asked you a very honest this question. This is your close question. I've asked you a very honest question. But Abbas, you've got a dialogue with me. Jason, I am, I am. This is what dialogue is. You dialogue. We're talking to one another, Jason. That is not a dialogue. Abbas, I happen to have 
the textual criticism on the Quran here. Jason, I'm I talk to you about the Bible. I'm talking about the Bible, and I've asked you a specific question. You said, and this is your own testimony. This is Muslim. This is your own te No, this is your testimony that the Word of God exists in all of those manuscripts. Now, clearly, all of those manuscripts are not compiled into the Bible that you hold in your hand today. Because it's an eclectic have text. You, have you it's heard, a text that has been selected heard. from right. some manuscripts right. in there, not have, from all right. of them. Exactly. Have you ever heard exactly. of the doctrine of preservation? No, I don't know what right. you're talking about. Right. Did you hear that? You didn't know what I was talking about? No. If you're going to debate yes. an Orthodox Christian like me, yes. you have to understand the doctrine of preservation. No, but I can ask you a question, can't I? Yeah, yeah, but... So if, if I you, ask you... Wait a minute, no. If Abbas. I ask you a basic question... Yeah, but Abbas. That, no, if I ask you... Look, if you said to me, ask me, do I believe which Quran is, uh, is the valid Quran? I'll say this one here. All of them. No, no, hold on. If you said to me, which one do you recite? I'll say Al-Quran. This is the one I recite. If you said to me, which one is the one that you revise and, and memorize? I say Al-Quran, this one. I'm asking you the same question. Which Bible is the I'm, word me, of God? answer it. We have two things. Number one, if you read the Westminster Confession of Faith, it states that the word of God confirms itself. That's number one. And number two, we believe in the doctrine of preservation, that God superintended and preserved his word. So when we look at history, we can look at the multiplicity of manuscripts, and we know that the word of God has been preserved in all them, right? How many manuscripts well, are those? Well, How many? Over 5,000, right? Thousands of them. Right, yeah, well, listen, Abbas. So we compile a text, right? It's not going to be perfect because we're not perfect. But the perfect word of God is in all the manuscripts. Now, with you, you we haven't even got into your problems. You, you, wait a minute, you've not even stated the, the chain of narration for the stick stones and bones. You've, you, you, you're going to the end that is preserved, but you've not gone to the beginning to show that you have the chain of narration for one verse, give me one verse of the Quran, where you can give me the chain of narration that it that it was on a stick or stone or bone. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And then you show me the stick, and then you give me the chain of narration. If you do that... I'm going to respectfully stick to the subject that we're talking See, about. Abbas, no, no, on. no, no. I'm going to respectfully. I love stick. you, mate. I love Jason, you, mate. But you're not I'm going to respectfully. I'm going to respectfully stick to the subject that we're talking about. Uh, Which Bible that the Christians use today is the literal word of God? That's Abbas, a simple question. I've answered it. I've answered Which Bible? Which one? All of them. Let's just start the first. All of them, including King James. Uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses Bible. Right. As well. Did you say you want answer? Alan. Okay. Let him answer. Are you going to answer? Okay. I'll do it with the Jason. He's going to answer on your behalf because you, you want to answer. As a Christian, we don't believe the Bible is the literal word of God. Because in the Bible you have literal words and you've got allegory, you've got, what's the word where it's um, allegorical? You've got different things like that. Are those so, man's words or God's so, words? Oh, we use the scriptures, right? So, right. so are those God's or man's words? God's, God's words. words. So, let, let me read, so they are scripture. Let me give you the, uh, they are scripture, yeah. give the Christian so, view. So they are God's so words. Yeah, yeah. But he's so, saying they're not though. No, no. Let me, let me give the scripture back. Clarify a bit more. It says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. The prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. You're not going to edit this, are you? So imagine, of course not, we never did. Authors of the Bible, the, the writing, it, the writing the words of God. As the writer, they're not just writing their own interpretation, it's the Spirit of God moving them. So which Bible, which Bible is the literal word of God? Then? Give him a, give him a banner option. The, the Egyptian Coptic Mosque, Spirit. or the Catholic, the or the Spirit, Protestant, which one? Okay. He's given you three options. I, I'm giving, I'm giving on his behalf. The, Bible the Coptic clearly, Egyptian Bible, the Catholic Bible, and the Protestant Bible. Obviously, the number of books are different there. So, which one is considered to be? My own interpretation, okay, is the New King James Bible. The Egyptian one, I don't The Coptic one has the books, the number of books which are more than you have, would you consider them extra additional forgeries? In the Catholic Bible, you've got the Apocrypha, right? Uh, these are additional writings. Are they forgeries in the name of God? If you read the, um, there is a commentary on them, and it breaks I'm asking down, you a simple question. Yeah, and I'm answering it. It breaks down into context what these extracts are. Basically, some of it is okay, some of it you can accept from, you know. Is that how they think it is? That's, that's, that's you've got to, you've See, got Jason, to, look, Jason, I don't mind when a Christian says to me, yeah. and he's honest, and he says to me, look, we don't have the literal word of God, however, 
from the different Bibles or this Bible, we get the spirit or we get the overall doctrine, or they make a comment, they say, it doesn't actually change how we feel and, and how we worship. They, they can make that comment. Now, I might not agree with that, I might not agree with that, but at least there's honesty there. What, what you're trying to see, say to me, is that we have the literal word of God when in reality, your own admission is that you don't. Well, let me, let me explain. Let me explain. Well, he, said, he said that the word of God is all of the Gospels. Now, now the question, the question arises, I will do, I will do. But the question arises, when the story of the adulterous woman was mentioned, or not mentioned, was that the word of God or is this the word of God? They both can't be the word of God, right? Let me explain. When we're doing textual criticism, secular textual criticism works on secular ideas. Right. We have to do it theologically, right. Right? right? So what I'm saying to you, I'm giving you a theological response right. from my, my my perspective, which is a belief. Which, I, which, I accept which, that. Which, I accept which, that. Yeah. Which is called the reform perspective. Right. right. Which, if you read the Westminster Confession, yes. there you get what I'm saying. Yes. That the Word of God testifies to itself, not by man, but God's Word testifies to itself, because man is fallible. Of course. Right. I totally agree. With so, you. secondly, that God cannot be defeated and that that God preserves his word, yes. right? Yes. So those are the two fundamental principles of Protestant theology. Okay. And based, on, get, based on this, get, you can get that in the Westminster Confession. Good. Yes. Based on this, where did Mark finish his gospel? Did it finish between 8 and 16, the last verses? Or did he finish before? Right. Did he have the additional? Okay. The ending of Mark's gospel, right? Yes. yes. Is it Mark 16? Yes, yeah, right at the end. Yeah. Right at the end. Is it chapter 16? Yes, yes. Right. Verse 8 to 20? Yes, yes. Did he finish at verse 8? Finish right at or the verse, end. Re, verse, finish at the end? No, the full ending. The full okay. ending. If he finish at the full ending, how come the earlier manuscripts don't show that? Well, let me explain. Let me explain. This is my expertise. Yep. Let's see. Let's see. That's good. I'd like to hear. In the Sinaiticus and Vaticanus, mm -hmm. it's not in there. Not only that, other well, well, earlier ones. Let me, let me, let me, but they've left a gap. If you look at the manuscript, they've left a gap. It, they knew it was a textual variant, number one. What does that right? mean, textual variant? They left a gap. Does that mean different texts? No, it means that if you have an ancient man, you say you've got five ancient manuscripts. What does the term textual variant mean? What do they think it was? It means, it means when you've got a manuscript right. and another manuscript. Which, is, which don't agree. Yeah, and they don't agree. Right. And there's two verses or even a chapter. So they're different, basically. They're different, yeah. but it's a textual variant. Yes, so they're different, basically. But, That's fine. but if, this, if it exists, whether it's in the 5th century or 8th century, it's still a textual variant. So, for example, you know the John I comma? You know the John I comma? That where it says, we are, the Father is three. Yes. You know, yeah? Yes, yes. In 1 John 5. Yes. It's not in the early manuscripts. Right, but if you go to the Sinaiticus of Vaticanus, I forget which one, they make a, com they make a comment that it's in other manuscripts and they say it's a textual variant. You see? But my point to you, brother, is this, Jason, is but that as a, the as a Christian, as a Christian, if one wants to, the if, if one the wants to govern I've one's life, hear. if one wants to govern one's life in accordance to yeah. the orders, recommendations, laws of the Creator, yeah. then one has to be sure that what one follows is indeed from the Creator. Now, yeah. you yourself have admitted that because of these textual variances, because of the Word of God being in all of these manuscripts, over 5,000, yeah. because the Bibles that you have obviously do differ on verses and have textual variances, then humbly I would suggest, Brother Jason, that you cannot follow what God tells you to do if you don't know what exactly God told you right. to do. Right. Can, I, can I answer? Please. Right. There's the secular way of verifying manuscripts, but then there is a theological way. And I've given you the theological way. Number one, that God's word verifies to itself. Number two, God preserves his word. Let me finish. The, if you read the Westminster Confession, that's foundational. So when, when the church is doing its scholarship, it has to take all the manuscripts, it has to look where the chain is the most accurate. So for example... How do you know what is most accurate? Let me finish, let me finish. So for example, the Alexandrian text, that Alexandria was known for Gnosticism. 
for, for ancient philosophy. So their copying, if you look at their copying, was not very accurate. Maybe they were lying. Let me finish, let me finish. No, use the right word. Mansur. If they were copying no, with their finish. theological bias, Mansur. were they introducing Mansur. lies in the text? Mansur, let me finish. That's the question that you didn't answer earlier on as well. Let me finish, let me finish. But the Byzantine text were very accurate. So when you say in the Gospel of Mark is not in there at the end, I ask myself, well, what tradition, first of all, family of manuscripts does it come from? What you're saying, and what you're saying, it comes, you're saying, your argument comes from the Alexandrian side. My argument comes from the Byzantian side. So I can be confident and know that the Byzantians were accurate in their copying. So for example, I'll give you an example. Uh, Westcott and Hall said when we found the Vaticanus and Sinaiticus that they were the oldest, 400, uh, 400 uh, 350 to 400 AD. But we had thousands of manuscripts from the Byzantian line, but they were from the Middle Ages. Thousands, right? But Westcott and Hart said, Westcott and Hart said, when you're making a Bible of the New Testament, we use two against three manuscripts. Not two against 5,000, or two against 3,000, whatever it was. So they, 